Bon. So, um, are we kind of centered? Okay. Yeah. What's up, everybody? How's it going? So, I am joined by Antoine Porche. He is my co founder on Algo Expert. You may have seen him in a past video that we did together. So, we've got a really interesting video for you today. We're going to be talking about what it's like being an engineer at Uber. Antoine's going to be sharing some of his experiences, and I think you're going to learn a lot. I guess before we jump into the topic of the video, though, Antoine, what's the obligatory Algo Expert plug? So, go to algoexpert.io slash can clem. <laughs> <laughs> So go to algoexpert.io slash Clem for discount on the platform. He's doing the like theatrical cinematic voice. I had to. <laughs> he didn't do it really well. But seriously, check out algoexpert.io. It's the best platform to prepare for coding interviews. So Antoine, why don't you start by telling us what you were at Uber, how long you were there. Yeah, sure. So I was at Uber for two years and I was in the infrastructure team or the organization. Uh, and specifically on the cluster management team. So we uh, were managing very large clusters of thousands of machines and the, softwares that, uh, the software that was running on them. And you were a software engineer, but who happened to work in Infra. Exactly, yeah. Okay, which is interesting because both when I was at Google and at Facebook, I was more of a product engineer. So I was working on actual products, either externally facing or internal tools products. And I was working on the front end, not really the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. So I was working definitely more on only internal products, right? Like everything that okay. uh, I did, all the kind of APIs that I created or wrote or all the tools that I helped build were only of use to other Uber engineers. Okay. And you were working primarily in what language? Uh, Go, for the most Go. part. Okay. Interesting. For me, it was always JavaScript, TypeScript. Yeah. Uh, but so how would you describe in a few sentences Uber's engineering culture, because most people out there think of Uber as just this ride sharing app, right? It's yeah. a simple yeah. app, you call taxis, they come to you, uses the GPS on your phone, but there's a lot of engineering at Uber. Yeah, I think there's 3,000 engineers at Uber now. It's a lot. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot. So there's a lot going on internally that the users are definitely not aware of. Right. Uh, but in general, I guess the way I would describe it is definitely a startup culture. Okay. Um, so uh, that's actually been really wild. I, didn't expect it at all uh, since Uber is such a big company. Okay. In terms of software, I thought it was also very interesting because there's a, a pretty significant lack for, of tooling, which I guess we'll go over later. Okay. And then also like a real obsession for open source software, which I was actually part of for the most part while I was at Uber, so. Okay, cool. So what do you mean exactly by it's a very startup-like culture? Because Uber just IPO'd yeah. this year. Yeah. So it's, by, by all accounts and measures, it is no longer a startup. Yeah, for sure. No, uh, in terms of size, it's definitely not. But the way, at least in infrastructure, the, okay. the greater org that I was a part of, a lot of the decisions for what should be built and how should we build it was made by the engineers, right? At the very bottom layers of kind of like the hierarchy. And those so decisions were Bottoms then, up. Yeah, it was definitely a bottom up culture, which I thought was actually amazing. It made me feel very empowered and I felt like I had a lot of choice uh, as to what I wanted to work on and how I was gonna be doing things. Obviously you need some kind of consensus, but it was usually among engineers, which, which I felt was really great uh, for my personal growth. Do you feel like there were a lot of like different roles, like PMs, for instance, product managers, sort of coming in and giving a lot of guidance or no? So it, for the two years I was at Uber, I don't think I interacted with a product manager a single time. Uh, That's interesting. Once. So so yeah, whereas I was in a startup actually before Uber and I interacted with PMs very, very frequently. So it's kind okay. of like a reversal that I didn't expect. And the reason I say that it's interesting is because Especially at Google, product managers are everywhere, including in infrastructure, in cloud. For, I was in cloud, so in cloud there's a lot of a lot of PM. Do you think that this startup mentality, like, it sounds like people are moving a lot of uh, very fast, a lot of engineering yeah. decisions? Does it have? It obviously has benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move fast, right? Yeah. Does it have downsides? So I think so. So the, the benefits, one of the key benefits, I think, of not having too much bureaucracy around what gets built is, a, yeah, as you said, you can just move really quickly, but you do tend to take on a lot of technical debt. And right. in the early 2010s, Uber went from nothing to being uh, basically like a verb. Even in 2015, right. it started being a verb. And Which, by the way, is like super impressive if you take a pause and think about that, that like, 
the name of a company becomes a verb, like you're going to Uber somewhere. That's an impressive accomplishment yeah, for a company. Yeah, yeah. And they did that within five years. And the way that was done is the engineers kind of had free reign. They could build what they needed to build to right. move the product forward. So it was great for growth, but now there are lots of systems that are kind of going unmaintained, things that weren't necessarily thought through the way that things are thought through, say at Google, because you have like an engineering board of 30 people and PMs like reviewing every design decision that gets made. Right. Yeah. So you're saying that basically decisions that were made back in the day in the interest of moving fast and in yeah. the interest of solving maybe like temporary problems or, yeah. or problems at the time weren't necessarily thought out properly and now are... Or, you know, it was a conscious decision, a, con a conscious compromise that was made where right. we can build a really robust and really, really scalable system, but we just don't have the time to do it. And right. so the choice was made in a lot of different ways uh, in the early 2010s to do things that would just benefit the business right now. Uh, and by the way, I always like to make these little comparisons to AlgoExpert, even though AlgoExpert is nowhere near the scale of Uber, for instance. But it's interesting because we are feeling similar things right now where we are making decisions as we're adding features and content and, and support on the platform. And sometimes we make conscious decisions to compromise on the way something is designed because we want to move fast right now, but we know that this might cost us later, later on. Yeah. It's just exactly. worth it from a business point of view. Yeah, that's, and that's the bet that Uber made. And I think it's worked out splendidly for them, honestly. But the, the interesting thing is, on, on the flip side, you said that Uber has a big focus on open source and on yeah. trying to be an industry leader yeah, yeah, in yeah. tech, which is kind of, in, in some sense, it goes against the whole like cutting corners. Yeah, and stuff. totally, totally agree. And I, so I don't think that was the mentality like in the early 2010s. Okay. I, like things were definitely not open, like it wasn't open source bonanza back then like it is right now. But since I want to say like 2015, and I've definitely been part of that wave, a lot of the in-house technologies that have worked, right? The ones that haven't worked the ones that are the ones that are being replaced, but the ones that have worked, the engineers that have been working on them for a while, obviously want to be able to open source and offer this to the community because honestly, it's good for Uber, right? right. Like if, you know, someone at any random company uses an open source technology that was offered by Uber, it, it, it gives brand recognition, especially right. among the engineers. And you know, what this reminds me of is companies like Google and Facebook do that a lot, right? Yeah. Or even Netflix, for instance, Amazon, they try to come out with these open source technologies and you wonder why are they doing that? It's free, they're not really ga getting anything from it, but they can be, they can, they can present themselves as industry leaders in a specific domain, and it actually ends up, you know, rewarding them. An example is, you know, front-end frameworks like React and Angular. React is paying off in spades in many different ways for Facebook, yeah. even though it's a free open source thing. Even just thinking about reputation, right? As as a as a front-end engineer who, like, if you're a front-end engineer who uses React, the the Facebook name as an appeals engineering company yeah. it does appeal to you. And More then, so than, for instance, Google, where you think yeah. like, oh, Angular. No offense to <laughs> Angular, but like you, it's one of the things that people say. They'll say like, I want to go to Facebook because of React, right? Yeah. And so similarly, this is why I think companies like Uber are trying to position themselves there. But do you feel like it has downsides to focus so much on open source? Uh, so I think it has a couple. So first off, like I think some of the open source projects that were open source weren't necessarily like thought through or right. open source at the wrong time. And then there's also the potential backfire really. So, so, and there are a couple of examples that I won't name that happened within Uber, but examples of projects that were incredibly successful internally that we that then, were open source. That were open source. Okay, yeah, yeah. And the, 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 the leaders, the tech leads of that project open sourced right. the project. And then these same people left Uber, the company, to form their own right. company on top of this open source solution. So it's like something works so well and you lose your like best engineers yeah, who developed it. Exactly. Okay. And you so that's, lose expertise on the on the on the technology. So that, and that, that seems like a problem that's that's hard to maybe avoid. Uh, but do you feel like there are, also, there are also negatives of focusing too much on open source, like when they don't succeed, like the open source projects don't succeed? Uh, I don't think it hurts that much if an open source project doesn't succeed. I, I, I was pretty lucky when I worked at Uber, I worked on three different open source projects. Two of them did fairly well, one of them less so, but I, I never really 
felt like it was like that third project was a necessarily that bad of a deal for, for Uber. Because for me, the, the one thing that comes to mind, and this is from my short tenure at Facebook, I know I was only there for, for a little over two months, but I still got to see a lot. Facebook has an impressive amount of internal tooling for especially IDs, yeah. like ID support on Atom, on VS Code. But one of the things that seemed to be recurring was that you start to ask yourself, well, wait a second, we're building this extension on VS Code. Microsoft is also doing that. Netflix is also doing that. You know, company X is also doing that. And then you start to think like, okay, well, is it, is it worth it? We're just repeating the same stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's exciting for the engineers, right? It is exciting like, for as, the engineers. So, so here's actually what happened with the first project that I worked on at Uber. About halfway through the migration, so we were migrating uh, a whole bunch of code essentially to use our, our yeah. new uh, kind of tool. It's called Makisu, it's on GitHub if you wanna look it up. And we use it on the AlgoX for backend. We do use it on the AlgoX for backend. Uh, but so we were like halfway through the migration at Uber, so a lot of things were using it and Google came out and open sourced their own version. Uh, actually, before we ended up, we had open sourced ours. It was still only internal. We right. planned on open sourcing it, but Google open sourced theirs, and we were like, oh, no. we're, we're doing exactly the same thing, but we couldn't use them because they were, we had more features than they did back yeah. then. Uh, we're, it's basically feature parity now. Okay. But so that, that definitely crosses your mind as an engineer. It's like, why am I rewriting something that's already there? Yeah. But a lot of the time, it's, it's slightly more complicated because time kind of like, yeah, um, and I think this is a good, it's just a good example of, of difficult things that happen at these companies. Because on the one hand, like we said, you want to be at the forefront of technology. You want to have an engineering culture that appeals to people who might be attracted by this kind of stuff. But on the other hand, sometimes it's like, okay, this doesn't have much value to the business. Or maybe it does, but it's too far out, right? Or it's too yeah. unclear. Um, it sounds like Uber was an interesting company, definitely, a really interesting definitely. one. It's, I learned a lot. And it seems like it's on it's on its way to really establishing itself as a big tech company, a la Facebook, Google. I hope so. I I do think the product is just amazing. It was definitely like needed in the world. Like I don't, right, I don't from know the product I, point of view. I, I, I don't know what I would be doing without Uber, honestly. Just going to and from the airport. Even it's super status, helpful, like, yeah. So um, so yeah, I, I definitely hope they succeed. Very right, cool. Well, this was super, super interesting to hear about you know, Uber's engineering culture. It seems like there are definitely similarities, but also differences between, say, Uber and Google or Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I hope you all found this informative. And smash the like button if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. At least do so for Antoine, if not for me. And we'll see you in the next video.